Peter Halkvist sent me this great suggestion on Patreon, and I want to read it to you because it's going to be the start of a new feature we call Falling Down the Rabbit Hole. I really like the topical Q&A, gets things going in depth, and I learn a lot. Just an idea, would it be interesting to have you go down the rabbit hole for 10 minutes about something you don't see in the question, but feels important to you? Always love to hear your thoughts. What a great suggestion, Peter, and thank you so much for asking. I'm going to do my very first down the rabbit hole um, segment right now, and this is the first time it's been done. Uh, I hope you like the idea. We'll try it out. So the idea is really simple. I ask myself a question and then I answer it. So it's not a question from the audience. It's not a question from the community builders. It's not a question from the chat. It's a question from me. So I'm going to be both question and answer. And I'll ask a question you didn't ask me this week that I really want to answer. So let's start by asking the question first. Hey, Andreas, love your work. Thank you so much, man. By the way, I really like your hairstyle right now. It's looking particularly fierce. Um, here's my question. Do you think the recent drop in oil prices is going to have a material impact on Bitcoin mining? We've seen over the past um, several weeks a dramatic and in some cases catastrophic collapse in oil prices. In fact, at some point, uh, WTI futures were trading negative, which means um, the uh, oil producers would have to pay you to take their oil. And the reason for this is because the sudden collapse in demand for oil and the increase in supply uh, caused by a cartel uh, conflict between oil producing nations uh, created a dramatic imbalance uh, in supply and demand. Uh, right now, there are literally hundreds of container ships that are absolutely, uh, sorry, um, of oil ships that are tanker ships that are full um, and are sitting off the coast of major refineries in places like Texas and California, um, in the Gulf, uh, around, I'm sure, uh, various parts of the Middle East and Asia. And essentially what they're doing is they're using these tankers as buckets to store oil that continues to be produced at record levels um, for which there is absolutely no demand. Refineries have shut down um, or have curtailed operations and there's nowhere for this oil to go, so oil is very cheap. And at the same time, this is now filtering through to oil pumps. For the first time last week, we saw prices under a dollar a gallon um, for um, for gasoline, refined gasoline at the gasoline pump or gas station or petrol station, as it's called in England, um, for uh, automotive gasoline. So under a dollar a gallon, a dollar a gallon, uh, just to make the conversion, is about three shekels and a giraffe per liter. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, the bottom line is that this is going to have an impact. And I find it very interesting that no one has asked what the impact is going to be on mining. If you think about it, mining is dominated by the cost of electricity and electricity uh, cost is dominated by the fuel or mechanism with which that electricity is produced. Now in China, where most of the uh, mining is concentrated now, um, most of that electricity is produced by coal. Because energy and electricity is a fungible commodity, if you are connected to a coal-fired power plant and somewhere else a gas-fired or oil-fired a uh, power plant has half the cost of energy because its oil is much cheaper, it's going to cost uh, less to get electricity from your coal plant, surprisingly enough, um, because they're going to have to compete and operate at the loss, uh, at least temporarily. So you, you are going to see, especially because of electricity distribution networks, the price of electricity are going to drop uh, as a result of this, probably worldwide, but not equally 
worldwide. In fact, I think this is going to have a very interesting effect because one of the biggest new mining uh, operations opened in the United States, in the state of Texas. Um, and I can't imagine that that is a coincidence. Uh, it opened long before this crisis and change in the oil price. Uh, but I can't imagine that it was in order to get the beautiful weather of Texas or uh, because of Tex-Mex cuisine. It probably had a lot to do with the fact that the US at 12,000 barrels per day is the largest oil producer in the world because of fracking. Um, and so therefore, uh, there may be really good opportunities for cheap power, which would suddenly make US-based miners much, much more competitive and profitable. In the past, one of the big gating factors for mining was availability of ASIC devices. Because those ASIC devices were moving so fast, moving from, for example, 60 nanometers down to 30, down to 20, etc., etc., uh, moving much faster than the speed of Moore's law, these ASICs went essentially out of profitability in a number of months. Unless you were within a few uh, hundred kilometers from the fabrication plant where the ASICs are made, um, you couldn't really profitably use them and you certainly couldn't ship them to customers overseas. That all changed in 2016 when the front end of ASIC development hit the wall of Moore's Law and everything slowed down. Um, at that point, new developments in ASIC started happening at the traditional pace of less than twice uh, the improvement in efficiency every 18 months. That is glacial compared to the past, and that means that most ASIC equipment today is still good for one to two years after it's manufactured, sometimes even longer potentially. And that means that the competition is no longer over how you get ASICs. If you can get ASICs, the real competition between miners is on the unit cost of electricity, which is dominated in some places by the cost of oil. And that was my fall down the rabbit hole. I hope you enjoyed that segment. We're gonna do more of these. It's gonna be a, a permanent feature. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free. So if you wanna support it, join me on Patreon.